The consolidated B-32 Dominator was a heavy bomber that was birthed from the general design of the very successful B-24 Liberator heavy bomber as a failsafe for the now legendary B-29 Superfortress should it fail, as the latter had employed massive amounts of new and unproven technology in an attempt to produce, at that point, the most advanced bomber ever created. Though itself an example of one of the most capable bomber designs of World War II, the B-32 Dominator was doomed to not only live in the shadow of the B-29, but also to die in it, as only between 114 and 120 examples were ever fully built. The type saw a remarkably short service life of only 8 months, serving from late January 1945 to late August 1945, as the B-29, of which had major issues that were eventually worked out, turned out to be the success that the US needed. This is is the story of the B-32 Dominator, the forgotten backup to the B-29 that ended up seeing the US's last aerial combat of World War II. The B-32 Dominator began life in 1940 when the US Army Air Corps requested a design from the Consolidated Aircraft Company in order to fulfill the role of long-range heavy bomber, should the B-29, of which had already been in the design phase since 1938, fail. As a result, and due to its status as a failsafe, the B-32 first known as the Model 33, used many design features that were already present on Consolidated's famous B-24 Liberator heavy bomber, including a similar twin tail, the Davis wing design, and a similar defensive turret placement. Although much of the fuselage, overall proportions, as well as its engines, along with a massively improved bomb carrying capability, were changed between the Liberator and the Dominator, with the twin tail design eventually making way for a single rudder design on the production B-32. Included in the initial design was the capability for the B-32 to be fully pressurized, though this saw major issues during development which led to it being scrapped in the production version, though some prototypes were equipped with this malfunctioning system. System. Additionally, the engines specified for the B-32, the right duplex cyclones, were still in the process of being developed and had noticeable oil leak and cooling issues. These engines, of which were also to be the power plant used on the B-29, saw similar issues that led to some engines on the Super Fortress to erupt into flames, causing prototypes and early production models to be destroyed at an extremely high rate, with upwards of 10% of B-29s not making it home during its first six months of deployment due to mechanical issues. This issue was not exclusive to the B-29, however, as the B-32 also saw these same engine issues, even possibly at a higher rate than the B-29, possibly due to the nacelle design on the B-32. Though these B-29 losses were not entirely the fault of the immature engines being rushed into service, as the B-29 made use of many cutting-edge technologies that were not yet reliable, it proved the U.S. Army Air Corps correct in at least considering a backup in the B-32, as the B-32 was planned as more so of an evolution of a pre-existing design, using a mix of brand new and tried and true technology, limiting its overall potential, though also, in theory, limiting its risk as a production bomber. To this, the development cost of the B-29 being a famous $3 billion, whereas the even more famous Manhattan Project costed only $1.9 billion in comparison, made it imperative that the B-32, though still not a sure bet, work properly if it needed to see full-scale production over the then-uncertain B-29. Interestingly, showing even more that there existences were inexorably intertwined, both the B-29 and B-32 had their first prototype contracts signed on September 6, 1940. Nearly two years later to the day, the B-32 first took flight on September 7, 1942, whereas the B-29, which had been in development for nearly twice as long as the B-32 at this point, saw its first flight take place two weeks later on September 21, 1942. Both vehicles were months behind schedule, and first flew with a bevy of problems, with the first B-32 prototype being so rushed that it did not fly with its landing gear doors, gun turrets, and problematic pressurization system. Problems continued with the first prototype crashing during takeoff on May 10, 1943, after completing 30 total flights. Prior to this, however, a production contract for 300 B-32s had been signed, although some officials were not in favor of this, as the development of the B-29 was now moving forward much more smoothly. Later in 1943, however, orders for the Dominator were increased to over 1,500 units. These production models would see the installment of 10 50 caliber machine guns in various positions throughout the craft, though initial prototypes used 20mm cannons in the outboard engine nacelles, firing rearwards. 
The B32 featured unique A17 nose and tail turrets designed specifically for the Dominator, of which were manually operated. As the remote control turrets that were initially planned proved to be too big of an obstacle to overcome prior to production. Additionally, the B32 featured reversible pitch inboard propellers, which served to assist in a shorter landing run. The B32 also had a max bomb load of 20,000 pounds, of which was equivalent to the B29, as well as a top speed of 357 miles per hour which again was equivalent to the B-29. Operationally, the Dominator continued to live in the shadow of the B-29. The once problem-ridden B-29 had already been used in combat in China by June 1944, whereas the B-32 was only first delivered for operation on September 19, 1944. That same day, while being delivered, the first operational B-32 crashed due to a nose wheel collapse when landing. Initially, the B-32 was to only be used if the B-29 was either substantially behind schedule or was considered to be a failure, which at this point, it was not, leading to the B-32s that were being built to supplement the B-29 as it replaced older B-17 and B-24s in the Pacific. Ultimately, whereas the B-29 had been in service for nearly six months at this point, the B-32 was being seen as a failure as only five examples were delivered for service by the end of 1944, with the planes that had been delivered being criticized for poor workmanship and many mechanical faults. In many ways, the B-32, of which was to be the failsafe for the B-29, began to look like it would instead be a disaster, with several high-ranking officials calling for the project's cancellation altogether. Those of whom were concerned were rebuffed when Brigadier General Donald Wilson advised that it would be unwise to rule out the B-32 as a viable platform prior to using it in limited service. To this, it would take until May 29, 1945, before the B-32 was deployed on its first combat mission, nearly one year after the B-29 first saw combat. Three B-32s were slated to take part in a bombing mission against the Japanese supply depot at Luzon, though one of the Dominators aborted the mission at takeoff. No enemy fighters or flak were recorded during this mission. More testing missions designed to discover the suitability of the B-32 occurred during the following month, with the final of these test missions taking place on June 25th, though a total of six more combat missions missions occurred through July 1945. In August, following the nuclear bombings of both Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Dominator's role switched to that of reconnaissance, as they were tasked with taking photos to ensure that Japan was maintaining its ceasefire agreement with the US. Though these were mostly unopposed, a few notable instances of combat did occur, with a two-hour long engagement between B-32s, flak, and enemy aircraft occurring on August 17th, with only minor damage received by the Americans, with one confirmed fighter kill and two probables against the Japanese. Japanese. The bigger and more notable engagement occurred the following day. On August 18, 1945, four B-32 Dominators took off on a routine photo reconnaissance mission over Japan in order to examine areas that were photographed the previous day. During the flight, two Dominators pulled away and ended their mission prematurely, with the other two continuing to their target. Despite the ceasefire, a total of 17 Japanese planes, with 14 being A6M0s and the other three being N1K2Js, attacked the two B-32s. The Dominator named Hobo Queen 2 was near 20,000 feet of altitude once the fighting took place, and did not receive any substantial damage. The other B-32, however, was flying around 10,000 feet lower than Hobo Queen 2, which led to her being beset by the bulk of Japanese fighters. Though this B-32 claimed two zero shot down along with a probable kill on a Shidenkai, Japanese records indicate no losses. During this heavy fighting, the B-32 was severely damaged, with three of its crew being severely wounded, with the fourth, Sergeant Anthony Marchion, being killed while attempting to help another crew member. Because of this, Sergeant Marchion is recognized as the last combat air fatality in World War II for U.S. forces. This incident, described by famed Japanese ace Saburo Sakai, who allegedly participated in it, occurred due to Japanese fears that the Dominators were bombing targets rather than simply performing recon. As a result of this engagement, all Japanese planes were ordered to have their propellers removed in an attempt to prevent further conflict from happening, starting the day following the fighting, August 19th. Following this ill-fated mission, photo recon continued with the B-32, with its final mission occurring on August 28th. This mission exemplified the mechanical issues that the Dominator had been afflicted with, as it saw one of the B-32s skid off the runway during takeoff due to engine loss, which caused a chain reaction that led to the plane exploding and burning, killing all 13 of its crew members. On the return trip, another B-32 on this mission lost power in two of its four engines, leading to the pilot ordering the crew to bail out. 
with two crew members dying in the process. In all, it could be said that, due in part to how it was deployed but more so due to its poor reliability, the B-32 may have killed more of its own crew than any enemies that it ever fought against, totaling only a few dozen hours of combat in the air before officially being pulled from service two days following its final mission, with all further contracts for B-32 production being pulled in September of 1945. Many of the examples of the B-32 that have been completed either flew directly into storage from the factory or to a disposal facility. Today, no B-32s exist as they were all destroyed either during or after World War II, with the final Dominators being scrapped in 1949, with only a few pieces of B-32s, namely its A-17 turrets, existing in museums today. Had World War II continued or had the B-29 been a failure, the B-32 may have played a greater role in the bombing campaign against Japan, though only if its faults had largely been worked out as they had been on the B-29. Ultimately, whether due to funding differences, the abilities of the engineers at Consolidated versus those at Boeing, or even simply being due to luck or lack thereof, the B-29 ended up being a massive success for the U.S. as now known worldwide as the only plane in history to drop an atomic bomb in combat, whereas its assumed failsafe, the B-32, is but a failure of a footnote at the end of World War II. That said, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys thought about this video in the comments below. And if you'd like to see future history videos, what you would like for them to be about. But either way, thank you all again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.